If you use Gmail, you've probably figured out what a lot of the icons mean that you use on a regular basis. However, there may be some other ones that you're not really sure what they're for. And for some folks, it's hard to remember what the icons mean. And there's actually a way to put the text in there instead of the icons. I'll explain what the Gmail icons mean and how to change it to text instead, if you'd like, today on Tuesday Tech Training. Hello, and welcome to Tuesday Tech Training. My name is Jennifer Stewart. I'm the owner of Gateway Productivity, and I'm a tech and productivity trainer. Today, I want to explain to you what the Gmail icons are. A lot of people have questions about some of them. They usually know some of the easier ones, like how to add labels and things like that, but there are quite a few icons there, and I'll explain just briefly about each of them. Additionally, even if you know what the icons are, sometimes they can be confusing or maybe they look similar to you. And so you can change those to text instead. So it says exactly what it is. So I'll show you how to do that today as well. Let's jump right into Gmail. Here we are in our Gmail inbox. And the first thing I want to talk about is the bar where the icons show up. Let's talk about some of this. This first one is to select all of the emails that are listed. And so that will select everything that's listed on this page, which you probably have your set to 50 messages. That's the default. But what I want to show you is this right here. All 50 on this page are selected. If you want to select all of them that are in the inbox or whatever folder that you're in, you can do that. And you may even see this in spam as well. If you select all of them to delete all the spam, then you'll get a little message that says, would you like to do this for all of the spam messages? So be aware of the different dynamic messages that pop up and the different dynamic icons that come up when you choose things. So that's the first icon. In this more basic menu, this one is to refresh the inbox. If you think there's an email that's coming that hasn't come in yet, you can do a refresh. And then you have your three dots where you could mark all as red if you would like to. You could do that all at the same time. Over here on the right, our icons are, the first one is talking about how many emails there are. A lot of people get confused. The number over here that you see here that it's in bold, that's your unread messages. For your total messages, you come up here to the upper right and the of, in this case, 70, there are 70 total emails in the inbox. Now, if you have groupings in your inbox, it won't show quite like this, uh, but for the basic inbox, that's what you'll see. And here you can get to the next page of emails. Here, you can toggle a split pane mode. So this is to show you an email that you might have highlighted. If I open this, you can see there's not a, a conversation selected. If I select one, then this is basically your reading pane. And then you have the option to slide this back and forth for your reading pane. So that's what this one is. And this is to switch back to full inbox mode. Here we have our input tools that we can turn on and off. So if you need to type on a keyboard here, something's wrong with your keyboard, you can always do that. And you can close it up here. And you can look at this drop down here to see if there's anything additional that you want. And same with this one here, you could do a vertical sl split or a horizontal split. There's a horizontal. So again, you can have the email preview at the bottom if you want. So that's the icons on the main screen before you select anything. And so after this, if you select an email, now it's a dynamic menu. So again, see, this was just a few things. And then when I click on it, now I have all kinds of options. This first one is archive. There is a whole video on archiving, what archiving means in Gmail. And so I won't go into all the details, but archive is basically take it out of the inbox and but leave it in email. It's kind of in email never land is what I like to call it. Um, and it's searchable in the all mail. It's searchable up here and it still exists. It just doesn't show up in your inbox. If you have applied labels to this email, which would be these guys on the, the left, if you've applied one of those to the email and you archive it, it leaves the inbox, but you'll still be able to see it in those label folders. 
Next, we'll talk about this one. This is reporting spam. So this is really important. If you are getting some emails that you didn't sign up for, go ahead and report those as spam because that teaches Gmail that for everyone, this is probably a spam message. If they get that message from a lot of people that this is a spam message, then they can start to block that person or that company that's sending that. Of course, this is your delete, your trash can. And so most of you probably know that one. The next one is to mark something as read or unread. When you see a closed envelope, we can mark it as unread. Unread is when the envelope's closed, we haven't opened it yet. So if I mark it as unread, now you can see it bolts and then the envelope changes. So now if I click this envelope, it would mark it as read. So that means that the envelope would be open. And so I've seen this one. Okay. And so now it is red and then I can flip it back and forth. So this is important if you want to track an email that maybe you didn't have time to work on, but you want to make sure you come back to it. That's one thing people use the red and unread for. Are you learning something new from this video and you'd like to see more? If so, click the subscribe button that's below the video. Once you do that, you'll see a bell icon. If you click the bell icon, you'll receive notifications each time a new video is posted. The next option is to snooze an email. I use this all the time and there's a whole video on snoozing. So again, I won't go into a lot of detail, but snoozing is when you can have something disappear from the inbox for a specific amount of time and then you set the date that it's going to come back. This is really helpful, I find, for let's say I have a Zoom meeting and there's a Zoom link in an email, but the Zoom meeting's not until next week. I can go ahead and snooze it until next week. It'll come back around and then I'll have that at the top of my inbox at that time. If for some reason you accidentally snooze one or you need to change the settings, you have a snoozed option here on the left that is essentially a label folder for your snoozed items. The next option is to add an email to your tasks. If you don't use Google Tasks, you won't need this one. However, if you do use Google Tasks, you probably have an icon over here. You may have added it. If you didn't, you can hit the plus and you can do that as an add-on, but I'll go ahead and pull that up. So here are Google Tasks and I'm gonna pull this out of the way. So if I want to add this email to my tasks, I can just click this. And then now you can see right here, it puts the text of the subject as the name of the task. And then you can set a date and time that you want to come back to this. You can add details about what you need to do to process this. This can be very helpful if you find that you're losing emails that get below the scroll, as I like to call it. So you can turn it into a task, set a time that you're going to work on it later. And then this will remind you as long as you set that date and time. Our next option is move to. This is if you have this email set with a specific label, you could have it leave the inbox and just be showing in that label folder. If I had multiple labels attached to this, and this is kind of skipping ahead, but that's what this one is. If I give this a couple of different labels and apply those, now we can see those labels. Now, if I use the move to, I can move it to one of those labels or I could move it somewhere else and that would apply that label to it. So you can move to all different places here. You can see you have your spam, your trash, you can create a new label. Um, you can even manage your labels from here. So that's what the move to does. It takes it out of the inbox and moves it somewhere else. So that's move to and labels. And then I always recommend looking at your little dots because that will give you more options. I won't go through all these different options, but I just want you to know that those are there. And then as a sidebar, if you have Boomerang, it's a free add-on to Gmail. If you have that, that has a lot of options as well, but we won't go into that today. So now you know what all these icons mean, but sometimes it can be hard to remember those. So the next thing I want to show you is how to have these be words or text instead of icons. So I'll uncheck this. And I'm gonna go up to the settings here. And I'm gonna to go to see all settings. And then I want to scroll a little ways down here on this main page, the general page here. 
going to scroll down and we're going to look for button labels. There we go, button labels right here. So you can learn more by clicking this. Right now it's set for icons. If you have a hard time remembering what the icons mean, we can switch it to text. The key here is on this page, scroll all the way down and hit save changes. You have to do that for it to connect. Now you can see instead of my icons, it says refresh, more. And then if I check an option here, here's all of those things that I talked about, the archive, the spam, and so on. So that's a pretty neat feature if you have a hard time remembering what the icons mean. I hope that now you can understand the different icons that are in Gmail, what they do, and then how to even turn them off and make it text instead. Maybe there was a new icon in there you'd never used before that will be very helpful to you. If you still feel like you need more help with this or any other tech issue, feel free to schedule a tech stress breakthrough call. You can do that on my website, gatewayproductivity.com, and click on the Let's Talk button or you can click the picture of the heart in the computer monitor that's above me. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.